making you friends. <laughs> so, it's January, Christmas is long gone, and you might be looking back on December wondering, did the Steam sales take enough of my money? I feel like I might have missed something, my wallet still has some green in it, which means I could have stuffed my cart with a couple more dirt cheap indie titles. You know, the ones that you'll never play, and only serves to inflate your backlog. Well. Here's hoping this review convinces you to either dust off your copy of Oxenfree or get it next sale. Here goes. I'm going to start off with uh, this game isn't for everyone. There are some people out there who will obviously have different tastes, and they won't like RPG side-scrollers reenacting their teenage years, uh, like Amore Girls or The O.C. But for those of us who are jonesing for our next RPG fix, a game like Oxenfree may be the conversational breakthrough we didn't realize we needed. An optimist. Oh, Christ. If you want my quick sentiments on this game, which you didn't really ask for, but I'm going to include anyway, um, I loved it. It's been two weeks since I finished it, and I still think about it. Oxenfree is, to sum up, a mystery treasure hunt. Every playthrough unearths a new secret and a new layer, and yet you always feel like there's something you didn't know until you played it again. This is the kind of game you're always left wondering about. Asking yourself if you really have the clear picture this time, or if you're kidding yourself with thinking that you do. Because the more you try to look up any information about this game's story, you realize people are just as curiously intrigued as you are. This game is more often than not compared to Life is Strange. I mean, they both happen to have a protag with a boy's name slapped onto a girl, which as much as I find that immensely quirky, it does reflect a certain air. The attitude that this girl isn't your average teenage girl who spends her day crimping her hair and writing random dull thoughts in her slam book. And how unique <laughs> is that? Oh my god. Well, in Alex's case, I wasn't totally turned off. They won me over, damn it, and the best way I can explain it is that they didn't push themselves on me. I was just an observer, and they were leading their own lives, and they didn't care how awkward or obnoxious they might appear to be. To me, that's always been what made good dialogue. It's when characters don't care that you're watching and they just say whatever tumbles through their mind through a writer's pen. Walking Dead Season 1 felt that way and now this game does too. It's their interruptions, their talking over each other, their misunderstandings and their troubles expressing themselves that really makes them endearing and fun to interact with. Just think about it, will you? He's not a bad guy. I know, but you think about it too. Think about dating him? No. Think about telling him I'm not into it so he doesn't like get his hopes up or whatever. Oh. And no, I won't stop at just the dialogue. It was also the voice acting, which was incredibly well directed. Every emotional note that needed to be hit was there. And I find that pretty rare for a video game. Now, you might disagree with me, and you'd honestly have a good case. The last couple years have been filled with some pretty emotional storylines, but I still find the quality of the voice acting to be a bit lacking in the industry. Or at the very least, there isn't much variety, and you'll oftentimes hear the same voice actor in just about 10 different games within the same year. Maybe I'm being too picky, but when I'm feeling my most critical, when I take my time, and listen to the voice acting in a video game, I hear them blurt out their lines and think, I guess they were tired that day. I guess they suffered from lack of direction. Maybe they didn't feel as emotionally invested that day, or maybe they just plain failed to immerse themselves in the role. And yeah, there are some issues with the recording quality in Oxenfree, but not once did I think the voice acting suffered from it, which dug me in pretty deep into the narrative. It's so quiet and primordial out here. I always feel like the forest is whispering to me. I always feel like the forest is whispering to me. I tried to like that game. I really did. 
It's obviously up to personal taste, but in the end, I just couldn't like the characters, who managed to grate my nerves so much I had to stop playing at least a dozen times before I could complete all five episodes. Uh, moving on. So, the art. What it mostly made me feel was unwelcome, what you'd expect from a horror game. The colors are foggy and even a bit washed out, and it invokes the feeling that you're trespassing on a memory that's been very much corrupted by something you don't yet understand, which adds gravity to Alex's bits of retrospect about her childhood spent here. When the secrets of this island start to surface, the art and graphics really begin to pop out, especially during some of the more eerie scenes of the game. Speaking of, I really love the way they built the atmosphere. It doesn't feel like a bunch of nervous ticks, like light bulbs bursting or a vase falling off the table. It's just these moments, these little blips and anomalies that keep breaking the pattern when you least expect it. Anyway, <laughs> kinda sorta went on a tangent there. What people will most often point out about this game is how conversations function with the dialogue tree. You can interrupt one of your friends, and it won't feel like you've cut off a chicken by the neck mid-squawk, but more like they heard you when you were about to speak and they actually stopped themselves out of politeness. It feels natural, and what's absolutely lovely to hear is seconds after the conversation derails, they pick up where they left off with a short transitionary phrase. It also makes you feel like you should stay quiet sometimes and let the conversation flow. Which is really great when you want to be shy and not have a bunch of people bark at you for a response like in most RPGs. It really makes what would otherwise be a bunch of Raggedy Ann NPCs walking around the screen seem alive, with a mind of their own. Especially when they keep stubbornly trying to make their point despite your rude interruptions. It's something I'd like to see more of in video games and it's a detail in conversations that's too often overlooked. What's next? Uh, now the music. You'll be glad to hear it's not a game filled to the brink with tear-jerking acoustic solos. The music complements the game extremely well. It punctuates the horror-driven moments and accentuates the characters when they need it the most. Like some of the best music out there, it doesn't constantly tell you how to feel. It's more of an accompaniment to how you feel, and it really helps that this stuff is shit I'd probably listen to outside of the game. In fact, during this entire review, I've been uh, listening to that music non-stop on loop. The genre of this music, I think, has been dubbed synthwave, although I never held much importance in genre in music. To me, it actually gave off a really cool Stranger Things feeling to everything. As far as the story goes, you can't really go wrong. It's really well paced and manages to surprise you without slapping you with a silly twist or a melodramatic moment inserted for cheap media coverage and feels. But I should insert a warning. The gameplay is next to non-existent. You walk down roads, you climb a few cliffs, you click on things to progress the story, and unless you count the few times you need to pull out your radio as gameplay, you won't be noticing any here. It's mostly simple puzzles conversations, and the occasional secret egg hunt, so be sure that's the kind of experience you want before you buy it. So, end raving rant. <laughs> I do have some nitpicks, but they're highly personalized to what I tend to like. Uh, number one, I would have liked it to be more scary, um, without the use of crescendos and flashing lights which I actually noticed are being used less and less in the recent years. Which is, I think, is probably a good thing. Two, probably could have used more gameplay or interactivity. I don't agree with IGN when they said there needed to be a lot more stuff to do, because that sounds an awful lot like I'm begging for a map with a bunch of icons clustered on it. Thank you, no, thank you, Ubisoft. Though, honestly, in the grand scheme of what this game is, those are seriously two very small nitpicks. As long as you know what you're buying, which is a story-driven walking sim with a bit of a Lovecraftian mood, then Oxenfree is exactly what you're looking for. 